three minutes EKG interpretation, okay? So um, I was able to teach this concept again to people who've been out of school for 30 years. And concepts that fourth semester nursing students, basically nursing students that have been in school for a year and a half are still having trouble understanding. So I can make it simpler for them. I can definitely make it simple for you, okay? So let's get into it real quick. So in order to understand EKGs, EKG is an electrocardiogram. Translation, it's a picture of your heart. We want to see how your heart's doing. So let's draw a heart here. Now, in easynursing.com, I make sure that we relate all concepts back to something that you're familiar with. So, with the heart, I call the heart a uh, four-bedroom suite because the heart has four chambers. Each chamber is divided by a valve, basically your French doors, we can say, to your four-bedroom suite. So your French doors are separating the rooms of your four-bedroom suite. So in a heart, what are the upper rooms of the heart called? Basically, the part of the heart that squeezes first. Good, it's atriums, very good. So atriums, the smaller rooms, the guest bedrooms we can say, the attic maybe, uh, the upper chambers of the heart. Those squeeze first. All the blood gets pushed down into, let's say, the master bedroom or uh, the living area. And what are those called? What are the bottom portion, the bottom chambers of the heart? Ventricles, that's right, ventricles. Very good. So ventricles. So, in a heart, I'm going to ask you um, a simple question right now. In a heart, I kind of gave you the answer already. What squeezes first? Atriums. All right, very cool. So in an EKG, I'm going to draw one right here for you, a little rhythm strip. What do you think shows up first then on an EKG? What shows up first? The little lump, right? This little lump, what we call a P wave, because the atriums are squeezing first, so that is atrium squeezing. What's the next thing that shows up? on an EKG paper. It is your ventricles, because your ventricles are squeezing. And you know what, I'm going to bring my P wave just to look a little smaller, because we know the attic is a lot smaller than the master bedrooms, right? So your ventricles are squeezing, so you have a what's called QRS. Now, anything that squeezes has to what? Has to relax, right? So, relaxing is what shows up on the EKG paper as a T wave, right? Because, just like physics, anything that goes up must come down. I actually caught it this time. Okay, so let's break it down and let's zoom in real quick to what it actually, um, let's put it all together here. So your atriums. This is your P wave. In medical terminology, we call the atrial squeeze, what do we call that? Atrial depolarization. So atrial depolarization. Now I'm going to interpret this for you because I'm your interpreter, I'm your calculator, I'm your speedboat that's getting you across the lake faster than uh, you, know, you swimming across it. So atrial depolarization just basically means depolarizing, you're sending a charge away. You're depolarizing it so you're sending that charge, you're pushing that blood out of the heart, okay? So the atriums are depolarizing, pushing the blood. So where does the blood go next? That's right, the blood goes down into the ventricles. Ventricles swell, then what happens next? Squeeze. That is what's called ventricle depolarization. 
depolarize. Depolarize meaning, what is it again? Say it out, say it loud. You're my class right now. You are, um, uh, ventricle depolarization is that squeeze, that push out of electrical charges, push out of blood, we can call it. Now, anything that squeezes, anything that goes up, must come down, right? Anything that squeezes, that depolarizes, must get what? Repolarized, basically re-expanded. So we call that, in medical terminology, repolarization. Now the ventricles we see for a T wave, repolarization of the ventricles. So we call that ventricular repolarization. Basically meaning that the ventricles are relaxing, they're relaxing, okay? So ventricle depolarization and atrial depolarization, atrium squeeze, ventricle squeeze. The T wave is that ventricle relaxing, repolarizing, okay? So here's a quick question for you there, wherever you are watching this. We have the QRS, it's pretty big, right? It's supposed to be bigger than your P wave because we know that the ventricles need to be big, right? What do the ventricles do? The ventricles squeeze the blood, but where does the blood go? That blood is shot out from that left ventricle to the aorta into the rest of the body. So making sure that the rest of the body gets oxygen. The rest of the body gets um, enough perfusion, is what we call it, for oxygenation. Because without oxygen, you can't live, yeah? Oxygen's a good thing, huh? Okay, I'm glad we agree on that. So, um, your right ventricle pushes the blood where? Where does the blood need to go to be oxygenated? That's right, it needs to go to the lungs because we breathe in and we get oxygen, we release our CO2. So that ventricle needs to be large enough to push that blood against that, those lungs, get the oxygen needs, come back through that atrium, be pushed down, and that left ventricle needs to be big enough to push out to the aorta to get oxygen to where it needs to go. Yeah? Okay. Uh, if, that, if I went too fast for you, I do an entire anatomy physiology of the heart, and I relate it to something that you're already aware of or something that makes sense to you. Uh, I relate it to a warehouse, how products are shipped and received, okay? So um, if you become a member of cactusbear.com, you have uh, immediate access to that, but atrial and ventricle depolarization uh, is what we're talking about right now. So, let's do it. So, let's go over it again here. Atrial depolarization. Squeezing shows up as a what? What's the first thing that shows up on the EKG? The little lump, right? The P wave. What's the next big crossy thing that shows up? Your QRS. So we say P wave is your atriums, your QRS is your ventricles, all right? And these are squeezing, right? And we know squeezing means what? That's right, it means depolarization, it's a squeeze, because you're depolarizing, sing that charge away. Now what's T wave? What's your T wave? Your T wave is that repolarization. Polar, if I can spell. And don't uh, laugh at my writing. I'm not an English major. I'm a nursing major. So <laughs> um, T wave is that repolarization, that, that re-relaxing of the ventricles. So here's a critical thinking question for you. P waves, we see the squeeze. Why don't we see P wave relaxing. Why don't we see P waves um, repolarization? Because, you know, the QRS, that's your ventricle squeezing. The T wave is your ventricles relaxing. Why don't you see a P wave that's relaxing? Why? Why, why, why? Um, you actually do, but 
Uh, it doesn't show up on the earthquake paper, is what I call it, your EKG paper, because that big QRS is covering it. So, a little um, trivia there for you. But um, now, this is how the heart normally works, okay? Um, in the normal EKG class that I teach, it's about 70 hours a week. Then we go into things that could go wrong with your, um, what do we call it, a four-bedroom suite. Uh, I used also the analogy of a car. Things that can go wrong with your car, okay? So I'm going to explain the things that can go wrong in this little next segment with this conduction of your heart.